Uh, welcome to our first Saturday um, interview with Wise Oceans. Um, very excited that uh, everyone's going to be here. Uh, I can see a few people hopping on now. So uh, I'll just uh, perhaps just leave it a couple of seconds just whilst people find their way to us. And um, two seconds. I'm going to set my screen up as well so I can see. Uh, the interview with Wise oh. Oceans. Ooh. Um, <laughs> I can see what I'm doing. Um, it's not like I haven't done this before, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, people are joining us. That's great, fantastic. So good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Charlotte, I work for Wise Oceans. And today in our series of an interview with Wise Oceans, uh, as part of Wise Oceans Careers, we're talking with Lauren Sparks, founder of Indo Ocean Project. And uh, as usual, I'll be asking her lots of questions about how she got into her career, um, what advice she'd give. Um, and, you know, uh, Lauren has got loads of fantastic information to impart to you all and inspiration as well. So um, please put any questions that you have in the comments. We'll get to as many as we can. And um, hello, Lauren. Welcome. Hi, Charlotte. Thank you. Uh, I should say that Lauren is in Bali right now, hence the um, uh, the dark background. We have <laughs> some time differences. I'm in the UK. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm we're very by much by. loving the um, the crickets happening and the bugs in the background. It's, it's giving us loud. a real feel for. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, I think everyone's enjoy. Everyone's probably very jealous that they're not in the tropics, if they unless they are, of course. <laughs> Um, of course, we rescheduled this in interview because of some issues with being in the tropics and internet and stuff a couple of weeks ago. So thank you very much to uh, everyone for coming back and being patient. Um, and uh, it seems like the internet's work. The internet gods are with us so far. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you won't touch wood. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Um, we're good. I, I have faith. <laughs> Uh, so first of all, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today, Lauren. Um, we've got our set series of questions that I'm going to ask, but chances are we will go off on some uh, tangents, which are often the best bits. Um, uh, but I'm just going to uh, do my usual start. Is tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what you do and the route that you got there. Right. So I'm originally from Canada. Um, and I have been working in diving, uh, oh gosh, for almost, oh, it's almost 15 years. <laughs> I started um, kind of around age 18, 19, and yeah, I haven't really done anything else, to be honest. Uh, I started so early and I, I didn't really <laughs> change tracks much. So uh, diving and then went back to school for marine biology and yeah, here I am now, I guess. <laughs> <The quick way. laughs> That's the, that's the quick, yeah. quickest way. Well, yeah. So, so your route was a little different. Between, yeah. Like, yeah. Your route was definitely a little different, perhaps than than many who find their way into marine conservation. Yeah. Um, well, I started out uh, really young, wanting to be a marine biologist. That was, of course, the first thing I wanted to be when I think I was like six. Uh, actually, I wanted to be, I think, a dolphin first, and then realized Kate good choice. <laughs> grow up, be a dolphin, <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be around them all the time. Um, yeah, so that that happened pretty early on. And um, when I was young, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. So um, very supportive family, very supportive parents, and uh, kind of navigated this route through academia, not so gracefully. Um, having a lot of other skill sets, but not really being able, uh, learning with, with my parents and with, the, with my amazing teachers throughout school on how to, how to do it, how to learn better. So I was always very much more of a creative person. So I ended up um, taking the the theater route instead um, at the beginning and then found discovered diving so I discovered diving at uh, 18 and I was swimming before that and I'm from central Canada but I spend most of uh, you know time around the ocean on the Atlantic coast and time around in, in Florida so I was always around the ocean and that's 
where I wanted to be. So when I was 18, like most Canadians, we go backpacking across Australia. <laughs> so cool. that's where I found myself. Um, I think I was 19, actually, sorry. And uh, yeah, started working um, at like a hostel above a dive center and they ended up doing my open water course for free and my advanced course for free. And I stuck around there for 10 months and I just was so curious and I was just, uh, I was so lucky because it was in Byron Bay and nice. so I got sharks. Yeah. yeah. And sharks like, really has been the main thing in my life to uh, move over dolphins, basically. bring on the sharks. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't want the dolphins. No, I graduated from sharks, uh, from dolphins to sharks pretty early on. Um, so I became shark obsessed and every decision I made after that, I think in my life was to be close to sharks and, and then eventually to protect them as I started to learn more about them. Um, so yeah, that led me back to university actually, um, from doing a major in theater to doing a major in biology. Uh, so that was interesting <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> really critical, really, really critical for my journey. I think, um, when I got my first job, I worked a few like summer camp kind of things as a, as a marine biologist or dive instructor kind of um, position. But my first real job with a title of marine biologist was in Fiji. And when I asked them why I got that job, they said uh, it wasn't actually my biology background. That was a bonus, but it was mm -hmm. my theater. Interesting. So, yeah. Um, and it's definitely something in bio 101 that you learn is everything is connected. And I really believe in that in a lot of aspects of my life. So the theater and the biology were perfect together because biology gave me kind of that knowledge and the ability to kind of critique and read and understand the scientific mm -hmm. terminology. And the theater gave me the ability to translate it and communicate it to the public. So Absolutely. this was where I basically found my role, um, working alongside much more experienced marine biologists uh and being able to kind of contribute in that in that way yeah yeah i think i think it's really really important that you know if that people value the other skills that they have and see the value in that because there are really i can't really think of any even the most academic research based job you can you have to work in teams you have to work with people and communicating and you have to apply for things and you have to sh share what you do you know so that ability to to have something else that you can bring whether that's photography or drama or I don't know, all kinds of things all of it applies especially in conservation because there's all aspects are involved in conservation we still mm -hmm. have to market we still have to write papers we still have to work with professors and universities to get the research done and the publications done but we also need you know all of this other stuff so yeah. it's so it helps you stand yeah. out right yeah i mean it, absolutely you can't just be one thing anymore um i i say that as somewhat like i i used to own a dive center here as well so i would be hiring dive instructors and i would be managing into ocean so i'd be hiring staff for there and and what i'm looking for is someone different someone you know not just the average check boxes and someone that can bring in this alternative skill and uh and it's something that kind of like we're lacking. And for me too, as someone who hires, uh, I really like, you know, maybe they're not the most experienced person. I like the people who can grow into the role. Yeah, One, because they're going to stick longer. Who are going <laughs> to fit usually... into the team as well. Yeah. Yeah. And be able to, yeah, aspire to something more and be learning something through the, through the role is really important to me when, when I, ha when I'm hiring. Yeah. So you Anyways, mentioned uh, in you mentioned Indo Oceans there. Um, uh, that's a, perhaps a good a good point for you for you to just tell everybody how awesome Indo Oceans are, what, how you set it up, why you set it up, what it does. I'm I'm probably pretty biased, so here yeah, we go. Well, that's question. okay. <laughs> that's okay. I also really love Wise Oceans, so this is great. oh, well, there we go. Um, Mutual Appreciation Society. <laughs> working with you guys for years now. It's nice. To yeah. Start putting some. Yeah, so I have, oh, sorry guys, it's Nyepi starting tomorrow morning, which is the biggest holiday in Bali. So we have lots of ceremonies going on around. It's, uh, it, yeah. it's all adding to the vibe. I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, what was the question? Oh, uh, Indo Oceans, Indo tell us about Indo Oceans. Yeah, Indo Ocean started, I, I started in 2017. Um, 
basically as an idea and a website. <laughs> uh, we started it that way, or I did, and then um, slowly got all of the paperwork and all of the other aspects and then bringing in um, kind of other members of the team, really critical members pretty early on. So Indo-Ocean's not mine. It's not mine anymore. It's, it's definitely a collective, it's a community. And there's really kind of four or five core people who really contribute to what the project is and what it was at the beginning is definitely not what it is now. Okay. So it's really, um, it's uh, basically we do a dive master and research diver training program. So um, in Indonesia, there's no such thing as volunteers. So we don't run a volunteer program. We run an internship program um, and we ask our interns to stay a bit longer. So I've worked for a bunch of uh, organizations in the past and kind of what I realized um, for the value of the project, the real value of the project was actually the trained people who knew how to dive and can get the work done and are there for longer periods. The two week and three week programs are amazing. They're a fantastic experience and a great way to learn, but to be able to really contribute to the project, we needed people trained in diving and we needed them there for a long period of time. Because mm -hmm. like any other job that you do, it takes like four weeks to learn anything, right? To be able yeah. to actually apply. To <laughs> Absolutely. And, I mean, we're, we are, we want to be, we're publishing and we're using this data. So it's really critical for us that our, our interns are very trained in all of the aspects and all of the fish ID and all of the different projects that we're doing, which is a little, a lot right now. Yeah. You know, like mangroves and corals and marine megafauna and, you know, so if, you whatever. Know, so if, when, when, yeah. when, so, when they have an intern, they get a, a huge amount of experience and across a wide range of 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 uh, topics and and so on. we really try to get like it, it's it's a, it's a definitely a combination of we want to provide really um really great training hands-on training uh for all these different kind of marine uh research skills at the same time we want to be contributing to the research itself so it's definitely this kind of 50 50 that we've split here right um we the, every time we do a new project we sit down as a collective, our lead marine biologists and program directors and everyone, and we ask critically, what is the value of this project? What is it doing? We don't want to do anything just because it fills your time, right? We want yeah. to make sure that there's actually value in it. <laughs> we, yeah. we get so a lot of questions. Emotion, I guess. Sorry, yeah. We get a lot of questions from people about how to choose projects, you know, and, and like, you know, if you are going to go across and live somewhere and dive, you know, these things are not free uh, because these things cost money. So you want to make sure that it's value for money and also that it's going to um, be valuable to you. So I think, you know, and um, what you're saying is exactly what we tell people, you know, look at what the outcomes are of the projects that you might be involved in. Is it, you know, does it have a purpose outside of just, yeah having a nice time for <laughs> a couple of months or something that's what i would tell everyone who wants to join kind of these longer term projects like this and a bit more scientific uh focus that you really want to ask critically what is happening talk to the alumni that have maybe graduated from the project and uh and yeah it's really important to know what you're getting and we at within the ocean we try our best to uh, like manage those expectations before absolutely arrival. A lot of communication beforehand, really, so that people know what they're getting into and know what's expected yeah. of them. If it's not there, then you should be asking questions, like what well, you yes. know. If the, if 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 most of your questions aren't answered in the website or the brochure or whatever, then yeah, you might want to ask questions. Okay, what was the question again? <laughs> no, no, no. I was just kind of just saying that. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna. Well, I will ask a question now. Uh, if you maybe um, you could say what a typical day is for for you, or for or, or maybe also maybe for interns that come uh, onto your project as well. Yeah. Uh, so we actually just relaunched uh, two and a half yes. weeks ago. Asked me that question a month ago, I would have said. Actually, we're still doing a few things, but uh, yeah, we closed March twenty uh, third of last year obvious reasons, um, but we stayed active throughout that whole time. So we were still doing, we were developing coral restoration project with the local community here and we were doing some plastic stuff. And uh, so we were still kind of active in a few of the areas that we were doing, the water quality, this kind of stuff. Um, 
now a day in the life is very it's different every day so the schedule goes out usually at like seven between five and seven o'clock in the evening uh we work with uh, dive centers so we need to kind of match what their kind of schedule is doing and then we have a bunch of different projects that can kind of ready to go depending on what the dive boat schedule which is really easy right now unfortunately for the dive centers uh because there's not many divers going out right now um no not yet slowly slowly you know so we basically head out um five days a week we're diving we usually do about between eight and ten dives per week um boat dives and shore dives we have our coral nursery, uh, which we work with with Reflex and Ocean Gardener. So that's in the most iconic dive site that we have here called Crystal Bay, which is also the Mola Mola cleaning station. Uh, so we head into the shallows there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so Crystal Bay is is very famous site, but it's also um, quite damaged uh, after yeah. being dived so much. And it's also very, it, it's not even just about the divers, it's so exposed to the uh, to the climate and to the Southern swell that makes Bali so famous for, for surfing and kind of has bit destroyed some of the reefs. So we're working together with them to replant them. So that's what they've been doing the last three days. Um, and then we have five different workshops that, or a, certain, a lot more than that. Serena's gonna get mad at me if I only say five. <laughs> She's <laughs> she's amazing and she has uh, built a lot of these different workshops so we have five certification courses that are kind of done throughout the program um, mm -hmm. and then whatever activity we're doing we have a pretty thorough workshop to do before that so we work on a rolling start date so people arrive and they come and, and you know it's kind of always fluctuating on um, who's doing what and at what stage which is actually really nice because the more senior interns are really helpful to oh, the yeah. interns and it creates this really nice kind of flow and you empower people the best way to learn something is to teach it so you yeah. <laughs> empower them pretty quickly um yeah and then so mixed with the oh gosh it's hard to say an average day because it's always different. yeah i know right uh, <laughs> that's the beauty of the job then, it is. It's always so. This is what's exciting for all of us. It's why we all love in the ocean and why we love our jobs because it's different every day. And there's still like the check marks. So we have a big board with all the interns and like 30, 40 check marks that have to be completed by the end of the program. And it's a mixture of dive master um, training and it's a and all of the research stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what a, a fantastic opportunity for people because, you know, having a dive master is often the minimum you need for many jobs in marine conservation. And doing a dive master can vary. You know, you could be in a super busy, touristy commercial spot where your dive master is going to be taking people out on open waters and uh, ad infinitum. <laughs> um, but, you know, they in with, with your project, they're able to, you know, not only get their dive master and, and lots of experience and all, all the things that you need to be a competent diver, but also uh, in the context of marine conservation, which is just fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that that's the value. I think like we really are a career stepping stone. We've had a lot of our interns graduate and go off and do some pretty incredible things, um, which, you know, we, we're always very proud of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and the stepping stone, which is what we, wanted to create both a stepping stone for budding marine biologists and conservationists to get involved yeah i mean we have probably like a 50 50 split in terms of people who are like super biology they're got their degrees and that's the route they're going and also the ones that don't and they want to get involved and, and maybe they go into the instructor route right so we it definitely we keep our group small as well like we like eight to ten people kind of 12 map absolute maximum um yeah. and we're able to kind of tailor each of those programs depending on what that person's interested in. So okay. some of our best projects actually come from our interns, came in and developed it alongside our marine biologists. Oh, that's and interesting. We often get questions about that, about whether people can bring their own interests or research areas into. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we've done short-term projects for people who are doing like their master's thesis, for example. And then we have people coming in for their undergrad who do a short-term project um some have to do it some choose to do it and some never leave <laughs> and some come forever and some come back to do their phd with us so yeah. we definitely have uh, this yeah we really like our community for sure that's that's really great <laughs>
um yeah just a reminder if you do have any questions please put them in the comments and uh, we'll get to them there's some love for you here on the comments as well from david and abigail <laughs> so um uh yeah so um another question we always ask our, our interviewees is uh, is there any advice that you'd give your younger self or something you wish you knew when you were younger um now that in you know now here you are with your successful uh, expedition <laughs> <laughs> your successful company uh, yeah um i mean the main thing is uh with the learning disability i would say it's like i was often told that you know sciences and maths were not going to be for me that it should go into the creative side or the english or these kinds of things and i listened because obviously you're quite young and, and and you do but there's just different ways to get things done and yeah. um yeah i mean find the help and support and find the support for sure um and there's there's alternate ways there's always more than one way to skin a cat yeah <laughs> um and i found my route and and now like you know i surround myself and i get to employ amazing marine biologists that have way better academic credentials than i do um so i'm able to provide employment for them i'm constantly learning from them um as well and someone told me in like my early conservation and research diver career was um, like how critical that relationship is between like the professor or the researcher and the field researcher and the conservationist that there is these two roles and they really need each other. Absolutely. Know, the, the, the professor can't always be in the field doing the data every single day, but they need the people they can trust there to be running that aspect. So you know, and vice versa, we wouldn't really be able to get our papers published if we don't have that MSE or the PhD beside our, our name, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we've had, um, yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, Pete, on the same sort of line, Peter said, um, says, uh, thank you for being here. He says, um, quick question. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you face when starting your career? Well, you, you mentioned, obviously, your learning disability, but in terms of like, you know, getting particularly setting up into ocean were there any uh, specific i'm sure there were lots of challenges but <laughs> yeah, uh... <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to trigger you <laughs> no it's fine it's fine uh, actually i'm really interested in policy um and and kind of marine policy so that's that's the area that i focus on and and um, environmental management. So that's kind of been my area. So it's definitely a good role for me in our company that I am able to um, make, you know, make sure we have all of the paperwork right. And there's lots of red tape when you're working in foreign countries in terms mm -hmm. of data and how to publish and, and this kind of stuff. So being able to work uh, and being able to contribute to that has been really difficult and rewarding. Um, so I would say that was the big thing. I mean, when I first opened into Ocean, it was like, at, at that point, it was like, okay, if we only get one or two people, well, we'll just keep going. We can do it. We can get the work done with only one or two people. So, I mean, that biggest challenge was to put it out there in the world, to create this thing yeah. from nothing, <laughs> put it out there in the world and just see who was interested. And uh you know, within our first year, we were full, and now we're fully booked. We're fully booked between six to eight months in advance. Oh, and I wish we could do more, but we don't want to um, damage the integrity of our project. Well, so, keep an eye on the Wise Oceans Careers pages because we're off. We're always uh, keeping that, uh, keeping your information on there. <laughs> um, we've got another. This is a, a long comment from Abigail, but I'll read it out. Um, uh, so refreshing to hear you. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, I took the decision to gain outer experience in international development and education during my undergrad, as it was a big passion of mine. A few of my academic peers looked down on it and said I should have focused on more marine biology related skills. So it's really amazing to know I can still apply outside skills to this to my career path. Does Indo Ocean Project also do courses on lower dive qualifications that they can possibly join the scientific diver dive master courses and projects after? So, so we have we basically take anyone who you don't have to have any experience really right. uh we have a short application process but we have different packages um 
if you're not listening. <laughs> we have different packages depending on what level of diver you are. So, but we do ask that we take you through to Dive Master because you do need that. Yes. Um, and you do need that to really take part in a lot of aspects of our of our research. So we have right now, we have someone who's come in with no diving before. He did a discovery dive two years ago and now he's here. He just finished his rescue and he's about to start his dive master here in the next few days. So oh, there you go, fantastic. Yeah, and we ask you to stay longer too, right? Like our minimum time, if you're a rescue diver already, so you only have to jump into your dive master, we ask you to stay eight weeks minimum. And like, that's what you have to stay. And if you are no diver, we ask you to stay, is it 14 weeks? Yeah, <laughs> 14 weeks. So in that time, we really are able to kind of mold these new yeah. divers ready to go into the world to lead survey dives, to lead rub drops, to lead research dives. And also if they want to go in and start doing the, the instructor course and go into that path as well, which was yeah. kind of the path. I think path. time is absolutely crucial. I did a similar thing. I went from zero, you know, came with like four, four dives that I did in a quarry in England. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, I did a three month project somewhere and then carried on and stayed on as a sort of uh, intern where I was yeah. leading dives. And by the end of like, uh, in the end, I was there like six months. I was so at home underwater, you know, hovering upside down, doing my coral surveys and navigating and looking after uh, groups of other um, interns and teaching them. And it, just that time to kind of bed in that everyday diving and that everyday um is so the much better I, than that kind of three week zero to hero thing <laughs> yeah, you know the time was crucial for us it, you know serena and pascal who are my partners basically um uh, they have developed this program as well right and so in terms of the scientific side and our very in-depth dive master side so it's, uh, I, I mean, zero to heroes are my favorite, the ones with lesser experience. And, and typically, like we do offer a four week program for people who are already dive masters who want to join, but we, we don't have too many of them, to be honest. Right. Most, most majority are doing their dive master and you're doing it together. So it's this nice. Uh, yeah. Who wouldn't want to stay longer diving in Bali, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Nusa Panit is pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and there's everything you want and molas in season and yeah. Sorry. Um, so I think a lot of people, um, you know, I, uh, I've recently, I recently did a, a sort of careers thing with, with students uh, at a UK university. And there's, you know, there's definitely a sense of like, oh my goodness, you know, <laughs> I've applied for all of these things and it, I don't get any anything back and jobs are so hard to find. And I think for, you know, in marine conservation and biology, it can be a little bit overwhelming of, you know, the, the sense of competition and, and the difficulty, but nonetheless, people do find jobs in marine conservation. Is there any advice or inspiration you'd give to sort of early career or recently graduated um, students? Yeah, in, in the risk of sounding self-serving, I would say join projects, jo yeah. join conservation projects join volunteer projects, uh, these kinds of things worldwide, it's going to give you kind of that best first kind of stepping stone. Um, the dogs have taken over the kitchen. That's now. <laughs> um, yeah. It's all good. Um, yeah, and, and sorry, what was Yeah, it was, it was, that was basically, yeah, what your advice would be. Just... Yeah, that would be the first for sure. And hone those alternative skills. Like if you have graphic design or like video editing is always really helpful. Drones. Um, it, like data analysis. Yeah, yeah. So many different like of your other skills are definitely even just like physical skills if people yeah like, amazing people come through who've been like ex-army and and boat engines some of the work is pretty hard underwater so yeah <laughs> yeah engineering all of, I, all of yeah. that all you of can it. Like, yeah fix an engine something. oh yeah the engineering yeah, it will be great compressors <laughs> dive equipment stuff it's just helpful this is stuff that we teach as well like we do a lot of equipment uh, yeah. workshops and in this type of yeah, so much field work really is critical. yeah so much field work is quite what, and remote broken and you can't do any of your research that day and there goes you know and the tides and the currents so like everything is super critical to be like on point and fixed 
quickly <laughs> when we need it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, well, we're, we're coming to the end of our, our session. Um, uh, I always ask, and I know it's an impossible question, but uh, I always ask, uh, do you have a, a favorite a sea creature or a favorite um, unforgettable moment in the sea? Um, we always like yeah. to hear about it. <laughs> um, scratch. Yes, I would say, uh, okay, sharks is obvious because it was just the thing that it's the reason I breathe, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Uh, I didn't pick the best place to see sharks. Uh, I did pick the front lines for shark conservation in Indonesia. Um, don't get a lot of sharks here. Uh, and so, yeah, what shark depends on my mood. I mean, the Greenland shark just seems so amazing. I can't I know, know, right? <laughs> so cold. <laughs> it's like cold water, so it's, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so some of those sharks are it, sharks change every day depending on the mood. Uh, maybe every hour. And incredible experiences. Uh, I'd have to share my. It was my birthday like five or six years ago, and at this point, I had been working as a shark uh, conservationist and shark researcher for a few years, and I had never seen a whale shark, so it was actually really embarrassing. Um, and then it was my birthday week, and the ocean delivered, oh. and I got. First whale shark, my first manta ray, and my first mola mola in one week of diving. Oh my, <laughs> that'll do. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah, so that's when I went, okay, I'm coming back here and I'm never leaving. <laughs> so this is, this is my, uh, yeah, the lucky three. Fantastic. So, mm -hmm. That's great. Um, uh, Nadine has put in a quick question. Um, she says, currently, it's a bit tricky to enter Indonesia as a foreigner. Is there a possibility to get specific visa, working visa, since this is an internship, or what kind of visa is necessary for this? So this sounds like one of these uh, bureaucracy things that you know all about. <laughs> <laughs> Too much about lately, to be honest. Um, yeah, to be honest, it's always changing right now. So um, we work with lawyers and agents that make sure we're kind of covered here in Indonesia. Um, and I've been working them for years. So we definitely have this great working relationship. Um, it is possible at the moment to come in on a sponsored uh, business visa, sponsored social visa. Um, so this is the avenue at the moment. It is still quite expensive. Um, so we're looking at some of our interns are waiting. Some of them are taking, pulling that trigger and coming in. Um, and ideally, all of our interns anyways have to come in on a specific um, visa because it is an internship, um, which we sponsor, but are kind of arranged through our agents and our lawyers. Um, to make sure everything's done properly because it changes every other day and it's hard to keep up. Um, so yeah, the answer to that is yes, it is possible. We actually just had three arrive in Bali today, so. Oh, there you go. Brilliant. Well, that's uh, that's fantastic. Um, so, uh, well, that, that brings us to the end there. So thank you so much. I'm so glad that we were able to uh, to reschedule this and, and bring you in for such a great uh, interview. I think that's been really, really useful and really great for people to hear it straight from you about you know what they can get when they come on to an Indo Ocean project. If you head to um, wiseoceans.com on our careers page and go to our expedition page, you'll see all the links. So if you just search Indo Ocean project dot something or other, it's there. I should know. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Lauren. And um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think everyone's going to find this interview really useful, really inspirational. So uh, we'll, we'll bid adieu and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night. Salam malam. Bye.